and welcome to Nights at the Game Table. Tonight we're here at uh, Pat's Games in Austin, Texas. I'm Kevin. This is Aria, and we will be playing a modern game of Magic the Gathering, where Sarah Lynn will be piloting a Vengevine Bridge from Below, Explosive Stark Graveyard Beatdown deck, taking on Aaron with a Trixie Mono White Control deck. Who's going to win? Watch the episode and find out. To keep up to date with everything at Knights at the Game Table, all you have to do is click subscribe and then hit that tiny little notification button next to it so every time we upload a new video, YouTube will be sure to let you know. And while you're watching, don't forget that we give away a booster box every month here at Knights at the Game Table. To be entered into the draw, all you need to do is share this video and then comment down below. While you're doing that, we're going to go check out the game. Okay, we're ready to play Rock, Paper, Scissors. Here we go. Um, here we go. So it looks like Aaron is going to choose Paper Tiger, Paper and tiger. let's see... Scissors Lizard, Scissor Lizard. cutting Lizards. Paper Tiger in half. <laughs> okay, so Sarah right. Lynn is going first, and she's the uh, she's the aggressor in this matchup, right? Yes, very much so. So she's playing, people call it Bridge Vine, or you know, Bridge from Below, Venge Vine. Basically, this is a deck that tries to get a lot of power in play very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Via the Graveyard. <laughs> Yeah, that's correct. Um, pretty much, you see your hand, you have a number of creatures that can go to the graveyard, and you have cards like Bridge from Below that reward you for, for doing that, um, as well as Gravecrawler and Bloodgast that can return to play from the graveyard, uh, and then Vengevine just kind of topping it all off as another graveyard sort of recursion engine. Nice. And she's taking on Aaron, who she is... She's taking on Aaron, um, who's playing, we call it Martyr Proc, or it's a, it's a mono-white control deck that plays cards like Sarah Ascendant, um, uh, Proclamation of Rebirth and Martyr of Sands. So okay. it's all about gaining life and uh, making sure that creatures can't attack you very efficiently. So, so uh, talk me through those cards you mentioned. Sure, sure. So um, you have Martyr of Sands, which is a 1 1. You can sacrifice to gain X times 3 life for each white card in your hand that, uh -huh. you, that you have to reveal. Okay. Um, and then Proclamation of Rebirth can return a 1 cost creature to play. Um, and uh, and yeah, and so you pretty much just sort of recur those two cards a bunch, um, gain a, a ridiculous amount of life, <laughs> and uh, then you just win in the late game eventually by attacking with like Squadron Hawks and Sarah Ascendants. Nice. Uh, some some cheap creatures that fly and can uh, you know attack for a lot. Okay, both players down to six cards here. Yeah, it looks like both players mulligan to six. Um, this this Vengevine Bridge deck it does mulligan some because. Each, for its hand to be functional, it needs to have graveyard pieces and also like ways to get those pieces into the graveyard. So it does require some specific cards uh, to operate. Okay. So it looks like Serum's going to be starting off here with a Insolent Neonate, which is a 1-1 one -one that uh, she can sacrifice to discard a card. Uh, she, she will be discarding Vengevine, which is fantastic here. Yeah. Uh, she will draw a card, and if she has any of her zero mana guys, um, yeah. That, yes, okay, Walking Ballista, a zero mana creature, that is going to return Vengevine immediately. Oh, well, look and at so that. And so we are going to be attacking, attacking for, for four. Four, four man's even got a land <laughs> on the board. <laughs> yeah, we're hitting for four, and uh, Aaron hasn't even taken a turn. So that's, believe it or not, not even the most explosive start this deck can generate, but it's still a pretty good that's one. pretty worrying. Yeah. So this Vengevine deck recently did well as a competitive, uh, as a Pro Tour? Yes, yes it did. Um, actually a friend of mine, Jacob Negro, did very well with the deck. Um, I believe they technically top eighted the Pro Tour, but um, only top four got to play the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, in the team, team, the Pro, team Tour. Pro Tour, that's right. Uh, but he did extremely well with the deck, and the deck looked very impressive on camera. I think he was able to win on turn two. A couple times, which is a pretty, you know, pretty borderline unreasonable uh, yeah. speed. And uh, just overall, I mean, you know, the deck is not only very fast, but also like pretty resilient uh, because it does also play Greater Gargadon, which we haven't seen this game, but that card allows you to sacrifice your creatures. So if your creatures were to say, like, get exiled or something, you could sacrifice them in response to the Gargadon to let them go to the graveyard instead of, you know, getting exiled nice. by something. All right, so, you know, this time, though, we're not seeing the 20 damage on turn two. Oh, there's the Gargadon. There's okay. the Gargadon. So the Gargadon, um, uh, the greatest of... Uh, <laughs> great, greater Gargadon. Um, and uh, now we're kind of in an interesting spot here for Aaron. So he's got Martyr of Sands, which is going to allow him to gain you know, quite a bit of life. And he also has, like, multiple copies of Sarah Ascendant, which 
when you have 30 more life, becomes a 6-6 six, six lifelink flyer. Very nice. <laughs> Which is very, very big. I think before we started filming, you were asking me, you are like, so does this white deck play any Bane Slayers? And I said, yeah, it plays a one-mana Bane Slayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a one-mana, yeah, I mean, six, 6-6 six lifelink. That card uh, was pretty impressive at a five-mana, let alone one. Yeah, yeah, it is. So it looks like, to me, I think Aaron, uh, looking at what he's got, a couple ghostly prisons, which are going to be great when we see those in play. He's going to reveal his hand uh, to the martyr. Um, now with four cards, <laughs> that means he's going to gain 12 life, and that means that Sarah Ascendant's going to show up, line. which is going to be a, kind of a, a stick in the mud here for this Vengevine deck, because it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little tough. Um, yeah, so Sarah Ascendant in play. Okay, um, so we're, we're just coming into turn three now, and we've got a 6-6 six, six lifelink flyer on one side of the board, and we've got a 4-3 haste, and mm -hmm. we're working on the 9-7 uh, on, on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so now the only the good news here for uh, Sarah is that Aaron is not actually at 30. He did gain 12, which is so uh, very, very good, but uh, it's a little short of the oh, 30 level that Sarah Ascendant likes to be on. The Ascendant not online yet. Yeah, it's just a 1-1 okay. at this moment. Uh, so that's sort of the good news. Um, the, not as good news is the fact that um, she did not hit bridge from below at all uh, with Stitcher Supplier either on the front or the back of it. Uh -huh. So uh, without bridge from below or a second bench find, you know, her attacks are not as explosive as some of the draws this deck can generate. And she's going to be facing down the Ghostly Prison for the next time. Yeah, we also know there's a Ghostly Prison waiting in the wings, which <laughs> um, uh, we'll 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 talk about it when it when it hits hits the battlefield, but that's going to be a challenge as well. For sure. Okay, so well, we do get to hit for more for more at the bench find, which again is relevant given that it keeps Sarah Ascendant kind of in check. Yeah, okay, it's interesting. Bigger. So Gargadon is uh, is eating a bench find for lunch. Okay. Okay, so now Aaron is going to take his turn, and he did, he does, I see, have a third land. He actually has, has more than one land. But that third land is going to allow him to play Ghostly Prison, which is going to be all kinds of problems for this Venge Vine deck. <laughs> yeah, does it have any answers to enchantments in the main deck? Nope. Uh, there is no way, I, I don't think, for it to remove this card. And Ghostly Prison, one of the most uh, fun cards to play against. It makes attacking cost mana. Uh, for each creature that attacks, you have to pay. And this deck is a low land Benchwine deck that really does not enjoy paying for its creatures. No, it, not it likes to attack for free. <laughs> it, does not, it does not want to pay. Yeah, all that being said though, hey, you know, um, the Sarah Senate's still not technically online, so uh, that's the good news. The bad news is that there is another ghostly prison. And they are cumulative. And they do, yes, they, they add up. So not only will um, Sarah Lynn have to pay two for each attacking creature, she uh, will have to pay four mana for each creature that wants to attack ever, and that is that is problematic. Yeah, so she's, she's looking to get a four land and get that gargled on the line before Aaron can gain much more life. Yeah, I think her her game plan at this point is like get to four mana and start paying four for a garg attacking Gargadon. Yeah, uh, which is yeah. not the the greatest of plans, but you know that's the plan we're on. <laughs> that's that's why the prison's there to you know yeah. lock people up. Not a lot going on on Aaron's side of the board, though. He needs. Uh... Well, he's got the ascendant, and he knows that uh, Sirlin's really uh, kind of unable to attack him. So, you know, at some point, those ascendants, uh, once we get to thirty, um, can start attacking when they get flying, and that's going to pretty much be the end of the game. It is. But um, what do we have to get us to thirty? Well, we could draw another Martyr of Sands, but we don't have a we've ton of cards no, in hand. Yeah, yeah. we've got no white cards. So right that's now. not going to work. Um, or, uh, yeah, so it's gonna, it's gonna be a slog. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be, they're both, they're both away from where they need to be. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bit of a slog. Do we have um, any victory conditions other than these, uh, these Sarah Ascendants? Um, not really. Uh, the deck doesn't, doesn't go real, real, uh, strong on ways to win the game. Um, it just has, it has Sarah Ascendant, um, and then it has Squadron Hawk. And then it plays like Mist Veil Planes, which is a planes that can put creatures on the bottom of your deck. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is that the Squadron Hawks can search up each other. And the, uh, the it plays a, a card called Ranger of Eos. 
It should, I don't know if you remember that. It's an older card. Uh, one mana, Correct. One mana guys or one power guys? Uh, one mana guys. One mana creatures. So Ranger of Eos is a, is a four mana three two that can find one mana creatures. So you can sort of recycle your Sarah Ascendants and recycle your Squadron Hawks. And so you play this very, very long late game where you don't have a lot of threats, but like they're extremely resilient. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, you know, he could get started if he could draw a Squadron Hawk, right? Yeah, if he got a Squadron Hawk, he would... Oh, look oh. at this. What, you mean, you know, you speak it, it, it happens. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice yeah. if that's how all games work? You're just like, I need this, and then it just comes immediately. Not as often as I'd like. <laughs> but there comes Squadron Hawk, which means we're going to effectively Ancestral uh, draw three. Uh, granted, they're all Squadron uh, Ancestral Hawks. Ancestral <laughs> draws one one flyers, yeah. Yeah. Are they uh, one ones? They are, yes. They're two mana one ones. Yeah. Um, Not even a Storm Crow's worth. No. <laughs> they're, they're mostly known for helping you shuffle off of Jace the Mind Sculptor's Brainstorms on Standard for a while, where they were part of the ominous Cobblade deck. Oh, good lord. That was too good for Standard. Um, uh, but in this deck, they, they do kind of fill a similar role, which is they're just a very resilient threat that has a, yeah, a lot of inbuilt awesome. card advantage. And, um, and that's you know, and when like your opponents are using removal like Lightning Bolt and Fatal Push, it feels so bad to use that on a Squadron Hawk when there's just more waiting in the wings. And that's as good as a uh, as good as a three three flyer. It seems fine to. Yeah. Get started. I and mean, Sarah Lynn only down to one land now. Yeah, so. One got destroyed and she didn't correct. have more basics. That is accurate, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Aaron was able to use Field of Ruin, I believe, to destroy a Blood Crypt. And being as this deck does not play very many lands and well, not so, very many basic lands, yeah. uh, she was not, she had to fail to find a, another basic. <laughs> wow. So, so our slow so begins the uh, the, the slow squadron hawk beatdown crew. Yes, the the hawks, the hawks. Uh, <laughs> so does Sarah then have any way to get back into this now? Oh, it's gonna be pretty tough. Um, I mean, her best way to win would be to top deck a number of lands and then start trying to pay four mana to attack with a gargadon. I mean, by the time she's drawn three more lands, she's gonna what one life now. She's gonna be pretty low. Um, yeah, now, maybe. the Sierra Ascendants, I believe they don't actually have flying if but you're under 30. Yeah. So they're just sort of one ones just hanging out right now. Um, but, I mean, four Squadron Hawks is a clock. That's, that's gonna kill you in. Eventually. Yeah. Four turns, four turns. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's, it, it's slow, but when you have these kind of like prison pieces in play, like Ghostly Prison, yeah. that are preventing your opponent from really developing or attacking, then, you know, attacking with just a bunch of one ones is a fine way to win. Um, I mean, Squadron Hawk, it does look a little embarrassing in the face of maybe a card like uh, Lingering Souls, <laughs> which is sort of like a, a four Squadron Hawks in one card, but... And, and yeah, which of those cards is, uh, is seeing play? Yeah, <laughs> it's actually a good point, you're right. I mean, Lingering Souls, it, typically, in, historically in modern, has been played quite a bit, but yeah, you're right, it's not really featured in many of the top decks at this very moment. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like Serlin's kind of locked out. Nah. It's gonna get nibbled away piece yep. by piece by the hawks. Oh wow, we're gonna oh, destroy your other land. land. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we're gonna destroy and your other land. The basics of that. Because we can. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there any way for her to get back in at this point? No, no, it's, uh, I think that she has to, in this matchup, hope that her opponent does not draw double ghostly prison. <laughs> Which yeah. is. Although, I will say that like there are some draws that they have, like we said with the Benchmine deck, where it could win on like turn two, uh, or even turn three on the play. So that would be, um, yeah, cool. that would it could actually just be faster than the Ghostly Prison. But in this particular draw, um, our draws off of or, or our, our mills into our graveyard off of Stitcher's Applier were just yeah. not that good. We did never hit bridge from below, so we're, we haven't seen any zombie token that's showing up. Oh, and that's another field of ruin. Yeah. Oh my. Goodness. Yeah, what, what's, you know, if you got four squadron hawks, you got four field of ruin, you know? It's, oh, the it turn one, four, 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 three haste monster not really cutting it. Well, the good news is greater Gargadon's in play. Uh, the bad news is that I don't think that matters. <laughs> yeah. those, uh, those ghostly jailers. Yeah, those ghostly prisons. So I think what we're going to see is greater Gargadon si sadly sitting there, unable to attack, and uh, the squadron hawks entering the fray for. An additional time. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. It, it's gonna need to be a small miracle here. <laughs> with the one, one mountain. 
Yes, uh, I think so. And she, if she, she can, you know, use the um, the honorable uh, sacrifice the special end to lose the game if she wants. <laughs> but if it he'll sacrifice it, uh, uh, it's, you know, I, you, you can squadron hawk me, but I can also foothills myself. <laughs> I think that's that's the stage of the game that we're at here. It's arguable, which is the more embarrassing death at this point. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Squatcher Hawk's a good card, right? Tripping over and dying on some wooden foothills while getting nibbled to death by these bloody hawks. <laughs> no, there we go. Yeah, Squadron Hawk's at Nibblers. I, that is a very good uh, conceptualization of what Squadron Hawk does. It nibbles away slowly at your life, though, yes. Okay, so moving into sideboarding, does Sarah Lynn have any, uh, anything to bring in against the uh, prisons? Um, yeah, this is going to be really tough. Um, we can see uh, the player sideboarding. Sarah Lynn mostly can only bring in like hand disruption type things, like Thoughtseize. Mm -hmm. um, and Aaron does have access to some pretty good sideboard cards. Um, he has Relic of Progenitus, which is a very, very strong against any kind of graveyard strategy. Um, and he also has um, he has Celestial Purge, which is which is decent. Um, it can exile some of the creatures, but it's definitely going to be like a little weaker against, say, some of the like really fast um, bridge draws. Gotcha. Uh, but you know, like against maybe a, a, a draw with like grave crawlers and such, it, it would be it would be decent there. Okay. So Sarah Lynn really looking for the explosive start of the game too. She yeah. To get right oh, yeah. off the. Right yeah. Off the yeah, she, she's going to have to see a little more. Like last game, we did see the turn one Vengevine attacking, which was very good, but no bridge from below, no second Vengevine. We saw two Gargadons, but I think you want to draw like one. Yeah. Um, so if, if I'm sitting in her seat here, I'm thinking about, I want a starting hand that has bridge from below and some explosive potential uh, with either like Vengevines or Goblin Bushwhacker to make that bridge really, really put a lot of pressure. Gotcha. Okay, so we shuffled up the game too. Yeah, we've got things ready to go, and uh, Sarah Lynn hoping to see fewer copies of Ghostly Prison. That would be... Uh... <laughs> across the board. <laughs> across the board from her. Let's try to avoid that. Um, and Aaron also does have some other pretty pretty good cards at, at sort of defeating the strategy, like um, uh, Howl of Burial, which is, is like a Wrath uh, destroy all creatures, but instead of being destroyed, they go on the bottom of your deck. Ooh. So they don't even go to the graveyard where this deck kind of wants, the Sarah deck wants them to be. Uh, but that that card does cost five, and um, this Vengevine deck can, may well not uh, get to five. <laughs> you, this one. you may not always get to five. Ooh, <laughs> Thoughtseize, good. Thought so seize, okay. uh, not maybe as strong as like a turn one um, uh, Phaseless Looting for this deck, but still a, a good ter use of turn one when you're playing against a control deck like this. So what are the options here? We've got a Celestial Purge on the left, is that? Yeah, Celestial Purge. Um, probably not the pick here, I think, but the, there's two Martyr of Sands, which is very awkward, because I think you would lean towards taking that. Um, I mean, for, for to me, I, I think Sarah Ascendant... Well, I think Sarah Ascendant, yeah. To me, I think Sarah Ascendant is the most kind of frustrating card here, because the Martyrs can gain a bunch of life, but the Ascendant is really the payoff for gaining that life. Yeah, exactly. Where you have this one mana 6-6 six, six, that's a lifelink creature that's just like, you know, like the game snowballs out of control with that card in play. Uh, plus, in addition to it kind of being a sort of a combo piece with the Martyr, it, it also was Aaron's turn one play. So it also just like effectively kind of makes his turn one a lot weaker. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here we go, basic planes, uh, this deck's favorite, <laughs> favorite land. Um, I do really. It's a very pretty basic. Place. It is. It is very nice, and you know I do really like that about this this mono white uh, martyr proc deck. I like the fact that it's a control deck that is not really hampered by Blood Moon much, um, because I think that's always been a, an inherent weakness of like blue white control in modern, is that um, Blood Moon is very good against you. Yeah. Um, and in this deck, with a lot of basic planes in your deck, yes, you have some utility lands, but overall, you know, you can function. You can function through a Blood Moon without too much trouble. All right, so Sarah and dealing herself some more damage. <laughs> uh, thought to... sees into oh, uh, Lord, fetch uh, shot. Yeah, well, if, if she had a death shadow, she could almost play it, <laughs> but not quite. And uh, we'll see what happens here, because you know this turn two can usually be a pretty explosive turn, but it looks like we're just gonna okay, incident then neonate, and we're going to sacrifice it. We're gonna discard. Ooh, yes, we're gonna discard bridge from, from below. below. Oh, here we go. Yes, when you start to see bridge from below in the graveyard, is when this deck really starts to function. So the neonate will then go to the graveyard, um, triggering the bridge from below, which will give us a zombie. Ah, 
Sweet. So we, uh, we see Walking Ballista for zero, which again will create another zombie. Mm -hmm. And also we have a Greater Gargadon. <laughs> nice. um, and yeah, so that's pretty good. This now, is more like it. yeah, this is this is a, a reasonable, uh, you know, pretty solid start. It is a little bit awkward that Martyr of Sands, when it sacrifices, will exile that bridge from below, because uh, bridge from below says it will get it gets exiled um, anytime that. Uh, an opponent's creature would go to the graveyard. Um, so you're gonna, you're gonna take you're gonna take one. <laughs> Never respect the martyr attack. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why would you not block that? Uh, I don't think it's gonna do much to change the the outcome of the game. But yeah, I mean, I think I would. <laughs> uh, so martyr of Sam's doing its thing, gaining a bunch of life, and that's gonna. Oh wow, Sarah Ascendant back. Oh, <laughs> oh 31 oh, Sarah sent it. Uh oh. Oh no, that's uh, <laughs> that's very that's problematic. No. Oh, although, I can see uh, I think Sarah Lynn's got a play here. Even oh really? Alright, let's see what happens because, you know, that, that Sarah Ascendant looking very menacing. Um, yeah, when you're over 30, <laughs> 30 life that is, Sarah Ascendant is going to be uh, a real, real problem yeah, for your opponent. Sarah Lynn with the, uh, with the two zombies on the board though, and a way to stop the Sarah Ascendant dealing combat damage this turn. Is that right? Uh, with that Gargadon. Aha, greater Gargadon, that's yeah. right, so she could attack and she could sacrifice uh, one of the, yeah, the, the blocked the zombie, block zombie to the gar to the Gargadon. Ooh, even better. So she gets to play uh, Goblin Bushwhacker. Give all our creatures plus one plus zero oh, and haste, which is nice. not relevant for the zombie, but you can attack also now with the bushwhacker. And now, uh, whichever creature gets blocked by the ascendant uh, gets sacrificed to Gargadon, like you said, mm -hmm. and that will also take uh, Aaron under thirty life. So for the moment, at least, uh, Sarah ascendant will not be active. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So there we go. We see that exact play happening. Gargadon uh, losing a counter. Um, five. Uh, five total uh, damage down to 26 and uh, then we'll see what happens okay all right so here we see um, Aaron does have I believe another copy of Martyr of Sands in his hand which is gonna be yeah. very very uh, rough here <laughs> he can use the martyr now or he also has this option of like squadron hawking for more squadron hawks and then like martyring for a million. <laughs> but I, I think it's actually better just to use it uh, now, right? Because yeah. he makes him gain like nine immediately and then he's able to just attack with the ascendant as a six six right now. Yeah. yeah. Which is gonna be a pretty big swing. Although, um, you know, I, I, for. Oh wow, this, yeah, it's gonna take oh, Sarah yeah. all the way down to six. Down to six. Uh, it's 41 to 6. It sounds like a bad college football blowout. <laughs> 40, 41 to 6. Um, and yeah, that, that's going to that's gonna be a little problematic. Well, let's see if there's anything that she can draw here um, that can interact with this Sarah Ascendant. Oh, more thought uh, seizing. Um, yeah. <laughs> the hawk. <laughs> Get out of here, squadron hawk. I've had enough of your shenanigans. Yeah, she is uh, with Bridge from Below in the exile zone. Uh, Greater Gargadon still on suspend. Um, it's uh, yeah. She's a terror or something. Yeah, yeah. She would she would need like a card like Fatal Push or something like that, but she does not have a card like that. So I think um, this might be it. So here we go. Yep, Sarah sent it coming in. Nothing we can do. Oh, there we go. That <laughs> uh, was all that she that's wrote. That's this, yeah. Uh, you, know, but, you know, that does happen, though. I mean, that's one of the things in Magic where uh, Sarah Lynn has a very, very fast deck that when it gets off to its extremely aggressive fast starts on turn one and two is going to be hard to deal with. But when it has those, you know, slower starts, um, the control deck is going to sometimes be able to come over the top. Absolutely. A couple of nice draws over there for Aaron as well. But his whole deck seems quite well set up to take out the bench fan threat. Yeah, it's definitely a good matchup for this mono white deck for sure. And I think it's one of the reasons um, that this mono white deck actually, it doesn't get played that much. I don't know why. The, the deck, I feel like it's very good. And it's very good against both Hollow One and this Graveyard uh, Vengevine deck, which are, you know, both two of the better decks, or most played decks too, in the format. Awesome.
Well, two excellent starts from the white deck there yeah. of different kinds. We had the... Uh, well, we had the multiple ghostly prison <laughs> draw, which... Uh, that hurts a lot yeah. of decks in, in Modern Battle. That, it does, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, not just this Ventrine deck, but like a deck like Affinity would also really struggle with that. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, so we saw that. And then in game two, um, it was just a case of Sarah Ascendant. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, despite... Being, uh, Despite a valiant attempt to disarm the Sarah Ascendant yeah. bomb, it went off anyway with another one. Yeah, that, that card is almost unraceable. 6-6 uh, yeah. six, six lifelink is just... It's pretty It's huge. really, really tough. Um, I wish we had seen a game uh, where Sarah Lynn might have been able to like have a turn one Faithless Looting, discarding Bridge from below, and get to really see her deck um, fully functioning. But, you know, I mean, it's modern, and especially when you're talking about decks that need a certain combination of cards to have their most explosive draws. It doesn't happen every game. Not every game, no. Mm -hmm. She got four power in both those games fairly yeah. early, turn one and turn two, I think, yep. but nowhere near the power of what that it can kick out. Yeah, without the Faithless Looting to really kind of like turbo out the graveyard stuff, um, you're left kind of like putting one card in the graveyard at a time, which is just not as explosive. Yeah. Do you say it can do a turn two kill that deck? Yes, it is possible. Yes. In, in fact, did do, did do <laughs> yes, on the Pro I, Tour, right? Yeah, it does happen. I believe my friend Jacob may have killed someone on turn two and on the Pro Tour, yes. Because okay. if you have a like a draw where you have like Faithless Looting into Discard Bridge and Vengevine, two zero mana artifact guys, um, that will give you four, five, six, seven, eight power on turn one. You attack with the Vengevine, they go to 16. And then if you have your follow-up is like any number of more zombies plus a Goblin Bushwhacker, you can, oh. you can deal them 20 damage by turn 2 very, okay. very easily. And turn 3, yeah. totally. Yeah, and turn 3 is... Turn two, totally plausible. Turn 2 can happen. Turn 3 would happen more consistently. Yeah. Um, and the deck can be, like we said, very explosive, but it does really need to draw those key cards, Bridge from Below and Faithless Loot. Okay, and struggles a bit against this kind of... this life game prison shenanigans. Yeah, Ghostly Prison in your la low land count deck is probably... <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Not the card you want to see. <laughs> no. All right, well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Knights at the Game Table.